I'm Kat McAlpine. I'm the editor of The Brink, Boston University's research news site. And I'm so honored to be here today with Dr. Nahid Bedelia, founding director of the Center for Emerging Infectious Diseases Policy and Research at Boston University. Um, she is also an infectious disease physician at Boston Medical Center. And I'm so honored to also be here with Dr. Syra Madad, who is an infectious diseases epidemiologist and the senior director of health and hospitals in New York City hospitals. And she is a adjunct faculty member here at BU Center for Emerging Infectious Diseases Policy and Research as well. Can you tell us what is a booster shot? How does it differ from a you know, shot in an original series um, of vaccination? And why are these becoming an important tool right now in the pandemic? So first primary series is two doses of the mRNA-based um, COVID-19 vaccine like Pfizer or Moderna, or one dose of the Johnson & Johnson. And as we talk about booster doses or an additional third dose, there is a distinction between the two. So first, an additional dose or a third dose after the initial primary vaccine series is when the initial immune response is likely to be in, uh, insufficient. So individuals that are, for example, immunocompromised would benefit from a third dose about 28 days after completing their primary series or their second dose. And so individuals that may be immunocompromised include those that are undergoing or receiving cancer therapy, um, advanced or untreated HIV infection, uh, received a stem cell transplant, um, and the like. And then a booster dose is when the initial um, sufficient, uh, so, the, so the booster dose is when the initial sufficient immune response to a primary vaccine series um, is likely to have waned over time. And so that's what we're seeing right now is across uh, just about all age groups, you're seeing that after the primary series, waning of immunity, and that's where that booster dose is recommended if you're six months out from the primary series for the mRNA base or um, two months out from the Johnson & Johnson. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, even if you're not in one of those those higher risk groups, why it's important uh, from a community health perspective uh, for for everyone to seek out and obtain a booster shot at this point, um, if they're beyond that that six month mark? So, um, you know, if we look at what, what is the the purpose of getting that the booster dose, I think there's a couple of things. First, we know that in the younger population, you're still well protected, you know, um, against severe illness, hospitalization, and death. And we are seeing, you know, a bit of more of a, a waning immunity against some of these severe outcomes, but still, they're still very highly effective against kind of the, 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 the most severe illness, um, if you will. Now, um, one of the things that these booster doses is doing is it's helping prevent um, ongoing viral transmission. And as you know, we are in the middle of another surge with over you know, 90,000 um, uh, cases uh, per day. And so it's helping to uh, you know, tamper down on the viral spread that's happening. So it's gonna provide beneficial at the community level with decreasing number of um, infections generally um, for, for everybody. Yeah, and, and just, I think, underscoring what Dr. Madad said is that you know, there's waning immunity against symptomatic disease for everybody, which is why you're seeing patients who have been vaccinated more than six months ago potentially get more breakthrough infections. Um, and so there is an advantage to getting a booster, which means that it decreases your chances of getting these breakthrough infections. There are there's still protection. That doesn't mean that the two doses don't work. You know, we still have, in the, even in the time of Delta, the two doses are reducing your chances of getting an infection by five times, reducing your chances of, this is all comers, reducing your chances of getting hospitalized by, by over 10 times, right? And, and so there is some protection, but by adding that third dose, you are increasing the amount of antibodies. And so you're getting that additional support against protection against symptomatic disease. And the question has been, since we don't know about long COVID and who's at risk, um, potentially there might be a benefit aside from protection from severe disease and community transmission, avoiding getting infected might actually protect you against uh, long-term you know, issues, medical issues such as long COVID, which we're still learning about. The last thing I'll say is that one of the reasons that I think both the CDC and FDA probably expanded the guidance for everybody is that it was so confusing. Um, people who were eligible didn't know they were they were eligible. And so it was actually decreasing the uptake of boosters and by simplifying it, making it everybody over the age of 18, I think it helps from public health messaging as well. So when thinking about these booster shots um, and the, the, the shots in the primary series, can you talk a little bit about whether there are any safety risks that have been um, you know, known or observed um, in, in the vaccinations given out to date and, and whether there's any thought that boosters would create um, any sort of health risk um, and, you know, if, if you are recommending these, these vaccines to your patients, uh, despite any potential risks, can you talk a little bit about why the benefit outweighs um, any 
any potential risks? So, um, Kat, these are great questions. And in fact, you know, one of the, these are questions that the FDA and the CDC look very closely at. And, and so let me start with the general data that we have. We have now booster data, both in the United Kingdoms. We have data from a Pfizer trial of boosters, third doses boosters, as well as data from Israel. And in all of those cases, um, the, the most common side effects of the third dose are very similar to what people experience with their first two doses, which is just, you know, feeling a little run down the first 24 hours, mostly that you get the vaccine, having soreness in your arm, low grade fever in some cases. Um, and so those, those common side effects are very similar to what you experienced previously. Um, there's an additional concern in, in, in young men, right? There's a incidence of heart inflammation, a condition that causes heart inflammation called myositis, which is, um, is thought to be related to the, the mRNA vaccines, both Moderna and Pfizer. And what they previously discovered was that with that second dose, um, uh, sorry, with that, with that initial series, that there is a slightly increased uh, risk of, particularly in young men, right? The young men in their 20s, men above the age of 12, there might be slightly increased risk of this above what is noted in baseline uh, with somebody who doesn't take a vaccine. But we're looking at numbers like, you know, 40 in a million in, in, pa in patients who are 12 to 15 and, and, you know, 70, you know, cases in a million in, in patients who are 16 and 17. And so rare numbers. And so the concern was, right, that in, in if you make the booster available to everybody and there it potentially was a risk of, of having higher sort of myositis or heart inflammation rates in young men who may not otherwise be at risk for severe diseases that worthwhile or not. So good news on this front. Um, and that looking at Pfizer's information, Pfizer's data that's now come out with giving boosters to everybody, they actually found that the risk of this heart inflammation condition, the myositis, with the third dose is actually lower than with the second dose. This falls somewhere between first and second dose. And I'll say also that, you know, the other thing to weigh that against is that, you know, it's not vaccine or no vaccine, it's vaccine or COVID, right? Because there's so much community transmission. And unfortunately, that heart condition, the myositis, if you get that, there's 26 times higher risk of getting myositis with COVID than if you didn't get it. And so you have to weigh that risk against potentially as a young man getting COVID, particularly at a time right now where there's such a surge of cases and there's so much COVID activity going on in our community. Um, question for people who are considering uh, or eligible to get their, their booster shot at this point. Um, can we talk a little bit about the mix and match strategy and, you know, sort of, you know, if you were advising someone on which, which shot to, uh, you know, seek out, uh, it, are there sort of more, some combinations that are more powerful than others? Um, are folks better sticking with sort of the, the shot that they originally received? And, you know, we're talking a lot about the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, but can we fold in a little bit of conversation about folks that uh, received the Johnson & Johnson uh, one shot? vaccine, a different technology than the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. But um, can we talk a little bit about, you know, at, at this point, how those folks should be deciding um, what booster strategy is going to work best for them? So, you know, if you've gotten in your primary series an mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccine, I would stick to the brand that you have. I think the mRNA-based ones um, offer really great uh, immune response in terms of neutralizing um, antibodies. So if we were to just focus first on the mRNA-based one. So the for the booster shots, the uh, the Pfizer is, you know, the same dose as the first two with the Moderna, it's half a dose for the, for the, the booster. Um, I think if you're looking at neutralizing antibodies, um, Pfizer plus, you know, Pfizer, and if you get a booster, you know, with a Pfizer is, you know, is great if you do a Moderna plus Moderna and then get a Moderna booster. Um, that's also a great, but you can mix and match um, if you like. If you buy the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine and for that booster dose that you'd be eligible for after two months, Pairing it with an mRNA-based one, so either Pfizer or Moderna, offers um, higher neutralizing antibodies, um, and so you know that that would be uh, a recommendation that you know you would want to uh, see, um, as well as talk to your healthcare provider if you have any questions as well. Well, I want to wrap up today uh, thanking our two experts from BU's Center for Emerging Infectious Diseases Policy and Research for joining us, uh, Drs. Nahid, uh, Nahid, Nahid Bedelia and Dr. Syra Madad. Thank you so much for answering uh, these commonly asked and complex questions uh, about th this, this wonderful tool and um, helping to, to slow down the coronavirus pandemic.